welcome back to the Silver Film Script Discussion, Season 2, Episode 11, Part 6. Got it right in one. Anyway, um, so we are we are in, we, we are kind of completing, wrapping up Act 2. We got to get into Act 3. Act 2, I feel like we need to get a conversation. It needs to end with the conversation between Ilmari and Feanor. Yeah. He like in complete control of that conversation from the moment he engages in it. Yeah. And it's he's got to make sure that Ilmari well, doesn't she's get polite. Say basically. again? She's too polite, basically. She's, she yeah. keeps giving him space to... When he interrupts her, she kind of, okay, say what you're going to say. And then she keeps expecting it that, that it will eventually be her turn to drop her, you know, biblical pronouncements, and it never is. He and instead, he shuts the gate in her face. So. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. I think he. I think he slams the door of the house in her face, and the Indus has to walk her to the gate. Oh, so she was actually let in. Yeah, I think she goes into the courtyard, and he. No, okay. that's part of the reason here's, why. He here's the problem her. with that: if Nerdanel walks her to the gate, then why doesn't she just turn tell Nerdanel? Because this is important stuff. Like he's got to shut her out. Yeah, completely. no, I guess you're right. He can't talk to anybody. No, yeah, and that was the thing is if, if the if we have this little ploy of a messenger so he, who doesn't deliver the message. She still come in to the courtyard, but he escorts her to the gate and slams it on her. There you go. That, that okay, because you that. wanted Feanor to be getting into her personal space. So if she's coming yeah. to the courtyard, Feanor can be like pushing her back to the gate. Exactly. And then, okay, that's 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 acceptable. Okay, uh, I mean, but it, 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 it is a little bit gimmicky of... what we're doing, so we have to be careful not to yeah right on our gimmick. And yeah. we. The, the only issue there is, is she, like, how is he backing her up, essentially? Is he, like, getting in he a grill keeps, to step he back? He just keeps walking into her personal space, and she, she gives way. Like, like I said, she's being too polite. The, right. the okay. right thing to do here is, 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 you know, kind of tell him to shut up and cow him a little bit, which, of course, would not have the appropriate effect, but it's worse to let him like he basically this is his this is his stronghold and he feels powerful here and he's right. exerting he's you know that's part of his his demeanor and the and once she's outside it's too late because he slams the door in her face right, right. well and, and so he, rather I, like, than i think part of it is he really just doesn't have any idea who he's messing with when it no, comes absolutely. to at this point he's completely his his opinion of himself is you know very Melkorian. It's it's way yeah. overblown. Yeah. Ever since um, he made that sword for himself, he feels like he can take on the world. Right. Well, it's and it's it's not untrue that that sort of thing does have that kind of effect on on some yeah. people. You know, some people when they're armed, they feel the weight of the responsibility. Some people feel like the thrill of possibly. fight me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right, They're looking for opportunities to prove that they can use the the thing that they have, right? Yeah. Right. Nobody knows if you can shoot unless you actually shoot. So. Right. So. Looking for an excuse. And so, I mean, Feanor is absolutely looking for an excuse, right? He that's how he frames the army, right? He, it's very Mel Corey. I mean, he's yeah. Like I want it to be super expl like to the point where I would love him to actually say sentences, whole sentences that Melkor has said. Um, in you know a pretty similar context, not necessarily a hundred percent the same, but very similar context. And because nobody was around for it, nobody except the audience. Like anytime you can give the audience something that nobody else knows, right, is, is delightful because they they just they secret knowledge is like the best thing you can have in a film or or a, as long as you don't overdo it, right? Like giving the audience knowledge that characters in the in the in the film don't have access. Like that's how horror functions, right? Mm -hmm. I know the characters knowing knowing no. stuff, or the characters not knowing stuff that the audience knows. Right. It's like yeah. when the character when the characters don't know that somebody's a bad guy, but the audience knows somebody's a bad guy. Right. It's mm -hmm. yeah. tense and to the max. Yeah, like the <laughs> there's an opening scene for Red Dragon. Yeah. which is a Hannibal Lecter film. Yeah. And in the opening scene, he's invited some people over to dinner at his house. Right. And part of what they're discussing is a missing person. Right. He's part of the group. Right. And he serves a, a dish and he, he, he won't tell them what it is. And it's just like, right. as that conversation goes on, because the audience knows who Hannibal Lecter is, right. they kind of know what's going right. on here. <laughs> and the, the, 
the characters are clueless because they have right. no idea that it's a murderer. This is really them. good. I think I've had this before. Ah, I promise you. Well, yeah, that's that's what that's the thing is that the character compliments the dish and yeah. and he's like she's like oh you must tell me what this is and he's like oh i'm afraid if i told you you wouldn't even try it yeah <laughs> and you know so it's just the whole thing is very smarmy but right but it, the scene Which, works I mean, that's, smarm is like hannibal lecter's <laughs> primary character trait right right but the whole scene works because the audience knows. Yeah, because the audience knows what's going on and the characters have no idea and it's fantastic. Yes. All right. But so, any kind of secret knowledge is good. You would think. Um, so. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> it's tantalizing. Um, Let's say that. Any kind of secret knowledge is tantalizing, no matter what side of the equation you're on. Agreed. Well, I think I think that that's actually what a, 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 there are groups out there um offshoots of christianity being a, a big one that get a lot of mileage out of that yeah out. absolutely you know things that the rest of the world just doesn't know and it's so right. sad but it really makes you feel good inside oh yeah you've you've got one over on the rest of the world how could you not that, feel good about that? that is gnosticism in a nutshell <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyway um so in Act Three, um, what we we need to get the visit of Fingen, but the end point of Act Three is going to be the big battle scene. So, right, we need to figure out how to get from one place to another. Um, and also, I don't necessarily that think that Fingen Fingen's arrival is the opening of the act. Yeah, because we just got rid of Omar, eh? so it, yeah, yeah. So what then is the opening of the act? What else do we need to do? We're running out of stuff to do. <laughs> um, what we have to do at some point is show that all the sons are aware of the conflict between their parents. Because we've already shown the Feanor and his sons fighting scenes, and we see their right. relationship with their dad. But what right. we haven't shown is anything to clue in what they think about their parents fighting. Do we have? Because this is. Nerdanel and Feanor have a fight about kicking Somare. the yeah, kicking the Valar or the Maiar yeah. out of the house. Yeah, Nerdanel would be much like more pro Valar in that. the middle of everything. Not right. only the kids are there, but also other people are there. Kind of. Well, thing. that would be it. Really interesting if she if if Nerdanel actually kind of loses it a little bit. Like has yeah. a public fight. Like, what are you doing, you crazy right. yeah. person? Like, what is wrong with you? What? Yeah. How are you? How? What? How yes. could you possibly yeah. think that's a good idea? Yeah. yeah, you can't treat the Valor that way. And Feanor's like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> and he I'm, tells him, "Make them God." Oh, I'm Feanor. I'm the spirit of fire. Nobody tells mm -hmm. me what to do. Right. And certainly yeah. not my wife. <laughs> Right. Um, and and that's the thing is because she rebukes him publicly, he yeah. can tell her she's wrong for rebuking yeah. him publicly and right. ignore what she said. Right. Um, I feel but, like the two most likely to have a conversation about that, I feel like are Maglor and, and Mygros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the older kids, they have witnessed their parents fight the most. Mm -hmm. Like, and probably earlier on in the marriage, there was a lot more like public fighting in the home. Yeah. That has probably yeah. kind of toned down a little bit. So maybe the younger kids haven't seen as much of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that their perspective might be interesting that way. But I don't necessarily know what is, they're doing. This is fine. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Well, that's the thing that if the question is whether or not they realize that this is different right. than Feanor and Nerdanel shouting and making up right, versus right, right. Feanor and Nerdanel having very different directions on this and neither one willing to budge. So like the youngest so. kids are kind of like, what does this mean? And the older kids are like, yeah, it's fine. This happens all the time. Well, are you saying that this is a family meeting here? Yeah, no, I no, think no, we no, should no, just, just do one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. yeah, yeah. The right. question is, I mean, which like if Mycros and Maglor, like it would be interesting if Maglor sees that, it, or at least questions that. This isn't yeah, 
this, this is, is not like it was table. before. Yeah. yeah. Kind, of, kind of trying to just smooth it over and pretend that nothing's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because that is something that he's good at. Yeah. Yes. No, this is the same as <clears throat> It's kind of yeah. deluding himself that nothing's wrong. I was wondering when this was going to happen again because it's been a while. Yeah. So it, it so if we have Maglor have the insight of this is bad, this yeah. is not the same as before, and might have yeah. just like no 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 this is just like the time when they fought over blah blah blah. Yeah. And and Maglor's like just like because I'm getting a really different vibe on this one. <laughs> right. Well, and and also I think Brian that you may have kind of hit on something with the idea that they haven't had a public fight like this in a while. Because yeah. it's one thing when you see two people yep. obviously love each other and care about each other, have a public fight, right. and, and you know that it's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, if, if my wife and I have a small argument in front of my family, they know that it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You know? it's, just, <laughs> it's just a marriage, right? Right. However, <laughs> if things got more hostile, you would see less of that because... Right, because mm -hmm. it's private stuff. You don't want to air out actual right. dirty laundry. Right. Yes, and if we weren't on the internet live right now, I would give examples, but I can't air my <laughs> friends' dirty laundry that way, so that's not fair. Um, Which is an no, because I mean, I, an example. No, I mean, I, I've known people whose marriages have oh, fallen okay. apart, yeah, and I've all right. known people who have been in abusive relationships, but. Right. Even if I yeah. refer to them very obliquely as examples right now, I don't feel like that's I'm sure they would not fair. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any reason for me to bring up their stuff in this context. But I agree with you that the the worse it is, the more you keep it hidden thing right. dynamic can totally be a, a reality. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. you, you, you hide when you're being abused. You, you don't let everyone see that. Okay. Right. All right, so we get we get that scene. If we get that scene as the 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 beginning of Act Three, um, and then we further go down this kind of diluted pathway of Mithros that Dad's there's no problem with that. Nothing's wrong with him. Um, <coughs> with the arrival of Fingen, does Mithros maybe not believe his own hype and actually write a letter to Fingen to invite him? Or does Fingen just show up? Because uh, I, I keep trying to figure out why Fingen just shows up and I'm not coming up with anything other than, oh, I missed you. Okay, that doesn't work real well. Yeah. I don't see why that wouldn't work necessarily. But it, it, it's just kind of out of nowhere. Like there's no there's no build to it. It's just- wait, what's, What caused this? And yeah. we're gonna see later that like, after the, sh well, before the ship running, you know, Mithers is like, hey, let's go back and pick up Fingon on the ships. Like, he's yeah. he's going to be proactive there. And then Banor's like, ha ha no, let's burn them all. Yeah. <laughs> and then when, when Mithers is captive, Fingon's going to just decide to go rescue him without talking to anybody. Right. Which is a weird thing to do, to just wander off into the mountains around and into Thangordrum. Mm -hmm. looking for a prisoner by himself with his harp like what was Fingen even thinking yeah it's 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 a little bit tricky so having Fingen just do things maybe fits his character mm -hmm. but also the you know hey it's been a long time and I didn't know how things were going with you guys so I thought it was time to come in and check on you like mm -hmm. you know you weren't banished and you never came back to visit me and Tyrion so I didn't know what was up, and I thought I should check into it. There is like a slight, that, there, there is a slight problem. Yeah. I just thought of. Um, if we get the visit from Amare first before the visit from Fingen, one can assume that Fingen knows that Melkor yeah. is on the loose. Now yeah. he may just assume that Mithros knows and not say anything about it. It may they just not. Don't talk about it. Yeah. Right, that's possible, but it does like mm -hmm. it, people would ask. Unless he was, unless he was traveling to, yeah, if he was already <coughs> on his way before the he could, he could have missed the news. But I mean, yeah, like how we could just have him say, "I've been traveling 
for a long period. Well, I mean, it's going to take him a lot longer to get anywhere than it is going to take a Maya, right? That's true. So, like, that doesn't that doesn't bother me in terms of timeline. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll, so we just have to clarify. Trip, yeah. That we yeah, have to clarify that 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 he like he has to say something to the effect like, of. He, Mythos might actually ask him, like, you know, we had a Maya come to us, and she had some kind of message do you know what that's all about he's like no i've been on the road for like a month yeah okay, okay. yeah that's yeah, that's, that. that's the way to solve that okay cool i i just want to make sure that we address that yeah no i yeah. agree with with the gimmick we have going if there's any holes in it it doesn't work yeah. because it's yeah. a gimmick it's not how things yes. really work it's a yes sitcom he said she said people have misunderstandings scenario right. and you have right. to maintain that the whole way through or else right. it falls apart Right. Okay. So, so they start. So they start out just enjoying the fact that they that they're well. First thing, does is how does Fingon get in the gate? Because we've just established that Feanor is like shutting the gate in the face of the fire. Scales the walls. No, no, he's not going to do that. But I mean, who's opening the door for him? Yeah. He scaled the walls. Really? Well, Mydros, Mydros could open the open the gate for him. And Feanor tries to like put the kibosh on this. Mytheros raises a protest, and Feanor is like, "All right, fine, whatever. I, who cares at this point?" The alternative is that Mytheros goes out to see him, and the meeting doesn't take place in Formana. Formana. Okay. Oh yeah, you know what? That's way better. There's no reason they need to go into like. If anything, I'm pretty sure Mytheros would like to get out of Formanos for a while. I would well, think so. Okay. The question, so they could go on a hunt. He opens the gate and walks out and says, "Hey, why don't we take a walk?" Because he knows that Dad might flip out if he brings him in. Possibly, or if you want to have the conflict I with Feanor, if Feanor walks out and says, "You know, no son of Fingolfin is setting foot in this place," then oh, Mithras is like, "Fine," out. and Mithras walks out. Like, no, is I that think a he just sneaks out without there being any fanfare at all? Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't necessarily think he would directly oppose Feanor. Because that would mean something. So yeah, that's why I was trying to figure out how this... Yeah. So, but right. the problem with that then is how does Maedros know that Fingon has arrived? So we do actually have a kind of weird problem that we have to figure out. Um, do do Fingon and Maedros have some kind of messenger? secret... <laughs> Secret signal system. <laughs> I, I am thinking that we lean a little bit on the fantasy element and use a bird messenger. Yeah, I was kind of going with the. It, it would really fit if there was a secret messages back and forth thing, but. I am it's willing. Really... To, I am willing to just grab onto the Hobbit and yeah, bird use messengers. Birds. We're all and over the Hobbits. And yeah. I am perfectly willing to just grab onto that and say, look, it's in the Hobbit. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, the problem, well, it's not a big problem, but it's a minor uh -huh. problem, is that if we do anything too cutesy with the two of them sending secret messages, it kind of looks like they're secret lovers. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. OK. I, I just was point, warning you at that. At this point, any excuse for shipping is just going to happen. Like they, at this point, no one is ashamed yeah. to let everyone know about their little ships, regardless of how appropriate or I, inappropriate or whatever. I know. They I, are. It wasn't that so. so much as if you if we feel it's too cutesy. Yeah, I mean, I don't it, think it's I don't think it's cutesy. I think I think okay. you know, it, well, Bert you comes in and tweets at at uh, at my those. It doesn't have to be. It could be like a bird of prey. I don't know. It could be a hawk. Oh, well, so, he, so they're going hunting. So he sends his yeah, hunting exactly. hawk. Exactly, that's what they're, they're hunting. His hunting for. hawk circles exactly. Formanos. Sure, boom, done. Maedros looks up and recognizes the hawk, yeah. and grabs his horse, yeah. and goes out to join him. That, that, is, going that out. is much better than my idea. My idea was to say, you know what would be less cutesy? An arrow through the window. But yeah, but that's even more cutesy if you ask me. That's too, that's money. Way too Robin Hood. It isn't it? Way yeah. too Robin Hood. I don't know. And, it's, and it's specifically like Disney's Robin Hood, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, my idea was he throws rocks at the window until neither of us opens the window. Um, oh, yeah, that's even worse. We, we, I know. That's and like, I, like I put a, rom -com. I, I put a, you know, little face on yeah, it yeah. when I put that on the board. And I got called on it as 
that's too cutesy. Don't do that. So. Um, okay. So like, it, it's like, I'm aware that we're going to have shipping problems. Um, I don't think that we necessarily need to walk head first into one. Oh, no. That's, if that's all I meant is can we no, not no, no. set it up for that me, they're like pining for each other? People are gonna, if if a, an interpretation exists that leads to shipping, but it functions well within the story, I don't care. That's yeah. none okay. of my business. The, 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 a, a piece of fiction is a compromise between the author and the audience, and I have no control over what the audience is going to do. So I'm just going to do what works for me, and if people want to read into that, that's their business. I don't care. Yeah. I, well, I mean, this I, is going to—it's going to be very readable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've I've made I've made the same exact case that you're making before. I'm just saying that it's it's one thing to be like I don't really care that people are going to ship this. It's another thing to be like I'm going to do this thing that's going to cause There's, people. They ship. shouldn't They're, be sending I, secret I love notes not, to each other. I am not That's doing all I was saying. With any subtext that they are lovers, and if people, but I recognize the fact that that reading potentially exists, that doesn't necessarily make it the correct reading. And I certainly don't think we have any other opportunities so far for to support that interpretation. So, yeah, okay. I, I forget right. what. Not, not so we worse. have a hunting hawk now. Is that what we have? A bird of prey. I like it. If because if the hawk circling Formanos, then Mydros just knows. Well, I don't necessarily know. Like, if it's circling Formanos, uh, he's going to know. So I think the bird goes directly into Mydros' room. Like, after the conversation with Maglor, they could be having it in Mydros' you know, chamber or whatever. And the bird oh, so, okay. so Mydros and Maglor are talking, and the bird shows up at the end no, of the no, conversation? No, like, after Maglor leaves... Mm. Maybe it shows up, but basically Maglor, or, you know, hell, Maglor could go to a window and just kind of be hanging out, and that's how the bird finds him. Mm. My address. Yeah, because otherwise, like, I don't know how Fingered would know what window to send him to, but... Mm. Well, I believe I definitely buy that this bird is smart enough for Fingen to say, "Go, go find the rest." <laughs> yeah, but I think like I, it, I think he would be super stealthy about it. I don't think he would be flying around where everyone can kind of look up and go, "Oh, look, there's a hawk in the sky," because that would. Fandle that's would not that weird, though. That's the thing is that that's not that weird, and only if Mythros with his vision is know. able to re recognize that it's Fingen's bird, like that's. Feanor's too paranoid at this point. Like he's okay. Yeah, I think I think it's, it needs. We need to be as clandestine as possible. Like the okay. idea that we, the idea that family members need to be keeping crap from Feanor because he is a basket case is kind of an important thing at this point. So everything should be constructed like that. Okay.